the thing here is, uh, you said we should move forward, and it's quite an interesting conversation we're having this morning, knowing full well that you have just stated the fact and stated the obvious. But in moving forward, do you think that uh, in f all fairness, they have started work, knowing full well that they have not even gone through the process of screening before the Senate, and they haven't started work? So why would you make it seem as if these ones have failed even before starting work? Uh, you just made my point. Four months after, four months after swearing in, you are telling me that we have not started. That is unacceptable. It is very unacceptable. Uh, this is the, the victory or the swearing in. The transition is not a surprise. They duly constituted a transition committee. They went through that process. The swearing in took place. Nigerians were excited, you know, they, we, the people went to the streets, they welcomed the new administration, and then it's like we're going flat. Four months after the election, it is, not an, it, is, it is not acceptable. You are in the private sector. If you are in the private sector, would you be, and somebody is doing, going and moving at the same rates that we're moving in Nigeria now, will, is that, would that be acceptable? It is not acceptable. Let us just call a spade a spade. You know, I'm just wondering, Mr. Denigo, just in case, let me, let me check to be sure I'm not missing anything. I mean, in the states that the PDP currently uh, are in a uh, position of authority, is there anywhere, maybe commissioners that the party have, maybe fresh graduates as commissioners? Well, I don't have the uh, list of uh, the various states and the list of their commissioners, but the issue that we are discussing this morning is the ministerial list. And... I, 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 you know, you do know that most of the states to, takes a, they take a cue from the central government. And I believe that the president could have taken a very step, good step forward in, in making sure that, uh, that, that there is hope for the youth in this country by showing that in, in, in his nomination. And I, as I'm sure you've, you've, you've seen what is going on in the social media, where one of the nominees actually was screened by by the, Senate, the current Senate president's father. And 36, 37 years later, the son is screening the same candidate again in a country of 170 million. What does that show? Does it mean that we have not been able to produce another Nigerian that can do that work? But Meanwhile, what? everywhere around the world, we are blazing records, setting records, breaking all kinds of records as Nigerians. So when are we going to get that opportunity to be part of this process? And I was thinking that the president had a lot of opportunity here, you know, in terms of the good way that was bestowed on him to show good faith and hope to these young Nigerians that your, your time is coming. You know, when the PDP was in position of authority, they did what they could, they did all they can, but at the end of the day, Nigerians said, well, to be at the center, it wasn't okay. So don't you think that, look, They've all seen it and thought, okay, this is our way of doing this. And we've got four years to deliver to Nigerians. And they believe that their way they're going will get Nigerians the results they want. It's like a football match. If you don't play champagne football and you get the results, don't we hear coaches say, look, it's all about the results, the three points in some leagues, if I could use that analogy. Well, you know, uh, just because uh, PDP... Just because PDP lost the election doesn't mean that members of PDP are no longer Nigerians. We are still Nigerians. We are still stakeholders in this country. And I'm what's affected... I'm not suggesting that they're not Nigerians. We're looking <laughs> at the principle in oppression and the oppressions. What turned out at the end of the day? That's the basis of the question, not that they're Nigerians or not. Of course they are. Yeah, I, 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 and that's what I'm trying to tell you, that we have, the, we have both the moral and the constitutional obligation to let the administration know if they are not doing right, and I'm sure that even in this short period of time that they've been in power, you have seen the kind of opposition that PDP has presented to Nigerians, and an opposition that is based on objectivity, on issues. And that is why you have seen people like their uh, spokesperson, he has gone kind of mute because the type of fight or the, the level of uh, antagonism that he's used to during the campaign PDP has denied him that opportunity by focusing on objective opposition, and uh, uh, there's no other business for, for, for him to talk about. So we, we are committed to making sure that, Nigeria, that we are very Nigerians, 
an opposition based on objectivity. Have you truly gone through the resume of some of these people we're talking about? Uh, because when you bring your uh, you know, mind view on this particular people, for instance, the man, uh, the gentleman from Oyo State, Bayoshitu, and a couple of others, have you gone through their resume to find if these people are actually fantastic in terms of what they've done before, looking at their track records? Yes, I've gone the I've gone through the I've gone through the C V that was published in the media. I've gone through the C V and uh, uh, we are not saying that individually that they have not been accomplished individuals. Yes, they have. But we are talking about taking care of Nigerian business. That we have 170 million Nigerians in this country, and out of that 170 million Nigerians, that we wanted Niger we wanted the president to give us to give Nigerians a sort of an assignment. To go and read, you know, some kind of a, my, a psychological assignment. Let us. We, I didn't know that somebody like this existed in Nigeria. You know, just like, for instance, like Kachi. It, that was a, that was that was an assignment for them because you fished this person out from from where they were, and then he gave Nigerians opportunity to go and research this individual. That's the same expectation that I was having. That maybe he can pick out Nigerians that are that are, you know, somewhere and everywhere, and give us the opportunity to go and say, okay, that he put a lot of thoughts. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you've been able to mention some names, but do you think it's going to be a holistic? Is it possible for you to have 100% new face or new faces yeah, but at least, and new at names? Least, at least if we have, if we have, if we have, if we have 65, 70%, 30, I think it's okay. And let me tell you another, let me tell you another implication to this. Let me just tell you another implication to this. You know, a lot of Nigerians complain that Nigerians are corrupt, but there are, there are ways that you can change that attitude. When you come to a boardroom, and you have about 70% of people with clean record, with maybe an organizational culture that is different, and you have 30% that is from the old guard. It will be very di difficult for the 30% to corrupt the 70%. But when, you, when, the, when the vice versa is the case, when you have 70% of the old guard and 30% of the new guard, it is just a matter of time. The 30% being humans, of course, it will be much easier for them to cross over to, to, to the other side. All right, but if, part of changing this uh, attitude is bringing some new, new blood to be part of that boardroom decision so that maybe 70, 30, uh, I'm sure that the 30% who, who benefit from the 70%, that is what I'm talking about. <laughs> Whatever verdict we get when they go through the Senate, yes. would you believe Nigerians have spoken? Well, we believe in the rule of law. The president has made his nomination. If they go through the National Assembly and the National Assembly sees them fit, to occupy those offices. Of course, we, we, are, we elected them to represent us and, make, uh, and, and carry out those functions. Of course, we have to abide by, by those uh, decisions. Of course, yes. All right, Mr. Kola Tudunigo, member of the PDP National Publicity Team, thank you for your time today. Thank you for having me.